He truly was the James Dean of the 90s. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Dylan McKay moments. Welcome to paradise, man. Welcome to your dream come true. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking into the most memorable and impactful moments from our resident Beverly Hills heartthrob as played by Luke Perry. Some of these entries contain major plot events, so a spoiler alert is in order. Don't all you guys out here have a thing for blondes? I mean, that's what you told Kelly. Blondes, brunettes, redheads, girls in tank tops. Number 10, his first appearance. Every character on this show has a memorable entrance, and Dylan McKay is no exception. When two jocks try to bully a freshman in one of the school classrooms, he appears seemingly out of nowhere and scares the pair off without breaking a sweat. Yeah, losers like you end up. Let me tell you something, just so you know in advance. I'm not in a good mood today. This earns Dylan some instant admiration from Brandon, who tries to befriend him. Soon it becomes clear that there's more to Dylan than meets the eye such as his complex family dynamics and anger issues. You see, my parents aren't exactly into parenting, but I'll, phew, don't tell them upstairs. Wouldn't want to spoil the fun. The episode does a great job introducing Dylan's character, as well as having him quickly win some sympathy from the audience, making us curious about what his journey would entail. White belt! Number nine, Saving Erica. Always in the background of the series, Dylan's inheritance becomes a major plotline in season four. A woman named Suzanne shows up claiming her daughter Erica is related to Dylan. Jack was her father. Erica is your sister. Hesitant at first, he eventually lets them into his life. That turns out to be a mistake, as it's later revealed that Suzanne and her boyfriend Kevin are trying to scam Dylan out of his money. It's done. Are we packed? Yep. Now all we have to do is deal with Erica. After the plan succeeds, they flee to Brazil, taking Erica against her will. The betrayal causes Dylan to reach a low point, which lands him in a coma in season five. Dylan ultimately bounces back up and tracks down the schemers so that he can get his money back, as well as give Erica a better home, bringing him closure. Number eight, the finale. In the final episode of the show, the gang enters a new chapter of their lives. Dylan, having graduated from California University, seems to finally have his life back on track. The only thing missing is Kelly, who's just broken off her engagement to Matt because of her feelings for Dylan. You deserve better than me. Kelly, you are the one that I want. I'm sorry. The pair gives emotional speeches about love at David and Donna's wedding. Afterwards, they share a kiss and a dance, hinting at a reconciliation, which is the perfect way to close off this beloved teen drama. We can't resist a happy ending. Number seven, his return. After a three season absence from the show, Dylan surprises the gang and the audience when he shows up on Thanksgiving. At first mysterious about the reason for his return, he reveals to Kelly that he simply missed his friends, especially her, hinting at lingering romantic feelings. I came back because I missed you. His return can't come at a better time since he's the one who helps David get rid of false statutory rape charges by talking to the girl who pressed them. This is not Denise's fault. No, it's not. It's yours and yours. And I'm asking you to own up to that for my friend's sake and for hers. Unfortunately, it doesn't take long for Dylan to fall back into his old habits, which causes the group to encourage him to seek out help yet again. While it's frustrating to watch him struggle with substance abuse so much throughout the series, his eventual recovery is definitely worth it. Number six, his father's death. Dylan's family life has always been lacking, to say the least, with his father imprisoned and his mother on the other side of the world. Once Jack gets out of jail, however, he makes a solid effort to fix the relationship with his son. It takes some time, but soon enough, the two begin a new life together, on a yacht, no less. What Jack fails to disclose is that he still has some very powerful enemies after him, and they plant a bomb in his car. Dylan witnesses the explosion, and his devastation is bone chilling. Even if seven seasons later it's revealed that Jack faked his death to go under witness protection, this moment leaves a huge impact on the series. You son of a bitch. Number five, may the bridges I burn light the way. 
The events of season four caused Dylan to fall into what's arguably his biggest downward spiral of self-destructive behavior. The last straw seems to be him finding out about Brandon and Kelly's relationship. What do you expect? You take off, you don't write, you don't call. You can't blame her for going to Brandon. Dylan goes so far as to crash Donna's debutante ball to yell at his friends causing Donna's mother to kick him out. Shut up. Why don't you, why don't you come over here why and make me? Stop here. it. Dylan, please take this somewhere else. Brandon goes over to Dylan's house to check up on him and tells him he needs to get himself together. Dylan lashes out further, yelling at Brandon that he has no right to judge him or tell him how to deal with what happened. When Brandon says he's pretty much the only friend Dylan has left, he responds in a careless manner, showing the audience the extent of his downfall. Dylan, at this point in time, I'm about the only friend you got. Are you sure you want to do this? May the bridges I burn light the way. Number four, going to rehab. Following Dylan's destructive actions, the gang organizes an intervention to talk him into going to rehab. Dylan reluctantly agrees, but runs away from the clinic after only a day with the help of Valerie Malone. However, his unwillingness to get justice on Suzanne and Kevin, combined with hateful and self-loathing attitude, makes her leave him. Things take a turn for the worse when Dylan gets high on heroin and drives off a cliff. Though it lands him in a life-threatening coma, he manages to wake up from it. The experience then forces him to attempt recovery, as well as find his inner strength again and is thus a major stepping stone in Dylan's personal journey. Number three, his breakup with Brenda. After Dylan and Brenda sleep together at the spring dance, everything seems to be perfect. That is, until Brenda reveals her period is late in the last moments of season one, ending it on a perfect cliffhanger. Dylan, I'm late. <laughs> What is she late for? The first episode of season two deals with her pregnancy scare, which makes Brenda realize she's not emotionally ready for a relationship. The pair ends up on the beach in Dylan's car listening to R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion when Brenda breaks down and tells him she wants to break up. Dylan tries to change her mind to no avail, leaving them both devastated. While the couple shares other intense scenes, this one is definitely an iconic TV moment. Number two, the flower pot scene. We had to feature another entry from Dylan and Brenda's relationship, and for good reason. The pair shamelessly flirts with one another for a few episodes until they finally agree to go out on a date with each other. It's too bad you're on duty tonight, or you could see what I mean. Well, actually, my plans got poxed. You want to come along? Dylan takes Brenda back to his hotel room, where they run into Jack. After a heated argument between them, Dylan storms out, leaving Brenda to try talking some sense into him. The couple yells at each other, which triggers Dylan to smash a flower pot and causes Brenda to run off. No, I want a taxi! No, just come on, damn it! Stop yelling at me! Dylan catches up to her and starts crying, admitting the effect his father has on him. The two share an explosive, chemistry-fueled kiss, which totally has us sold on the pairing, despite the fight we just witnessed. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I don't know what I'm gonna do without you guys. At the risk of sounding mushy. You Walsh people are the only family I got. Do you feel guilty? Huh? Do you? Brandon? Sorry you had to find out this way. Second time's the charm. Wonderful. I'll read it next year. What? We're no longer accepting applications. I don't think anybody is uh, gonna die if you bend the rules a little bit. I want more than your applause. I won't be gone forever, Dylan. Give me something to come back to. Look, it was you two who gave me that dumb ultimatum. You said choose. I chose. I chose you. I want you. I've always wanted you. Number one, Tony's death. The Dylan, Brenda, Kelly love triangle was a big focus in the gang's high school years. In season six, however, Dylan meets Tony, daughter of the mafia boss who was responsible for his father's death. At first, he's just using her, but Dylan genuinely falls in love with Tony and even marries her. Enraged, Tony's father orders a hitman to kill Dylan before the couple can leave Beverly Hills. All set. I got two of my best men on it. It'll look like a break-in burglary, and the McKay kid was just 
stupid and got in the way. Tragically, because of a thunderstorm, the hitman mistakes Tony for Dylan when she takes her husband's car and shoots her, killing her instantly. Dylan getting there just minutes later and breaking down while holding Tony's body is one of the most devastating moments of the show. No, God, Francis! After the funeral, Dylan leaves town, drawing his character's time on the show to a close, at least for the time being. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.